Hello and greetings, welcome everybody and welcome back to another Crusader Kings 3 series. Today we start with Crusader Kings 3 Survival Edition. So kind of like the idea is that we start on a small island with our own handcrafted person, well, or character. Um, and we will want to try and build up a big empire out of this. I hope you're going to enjoy this one. We're playing on the hardest difficulty with the Iron Man mode enabled, of course. So there's no manual saving for us. Everything we do is permanent and I can't cheat my way around that. Let's get cracking. So the first thing we want to do is, as always, choose our era. And we are going with the um, first era there, so the Wrath of the Northman 867, because I absolutely adore this era, there's basically nothing, no research tag yet, um, no research um, stuff that you can already build, so you really start with nothing with a little tribal village where basically there are a few huts, and with that you have to go for now, right after choosing this era, we are thrown into Europe, into the heart of Europe, 867. Well, we definitely don't have any empire yet. We do have a few smaller kingdoms like, well, the West Frontier and the East Frontier here. And even Britain or England has not even formed itself yet. And where do we start and where do we fit into all this mess? Well, I tell you what, right here on one of the northernmost islands you can have. And it's this one here. So the chieftain of Shetland on this little small island island with basically only one village we want to start our adventure and want to build up an empire um hopefully we can do this now i'm not using this old guy here chieftain einar he's definitely not something i would call a good chieftain so we're going to create our own um character in this one and as we can see there we got her already so i can choose now definitely also a male person um and then we can choose basically all our names so we can um for example say that we want to be called bjorn um and we are of the Skold House, right? So Bjorn Skold, that is just a perfect name for it. I'm also going to choose a few different um, coat of arms here and stuff like that. So what we can do and also my Hatland Chiefdom. So this is the banner of my um, realm itself. And this is the banner of my house, right? So there is a big difference between the two of them, but we'll see uh, that. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I want to choose my 20 years. So we are going to start as young as possible. Below that, we are getting into children and or into a child. And I don't want that. So we're starting with 20. Um, and then we have the traits that are basically going to be very important for our lifetime. And the one that I want to go with, since it's a brutal age and we are kind of like Northmen, you know, we are starting as a warrior. And in that case, I'm not starting as a brilliant strategist as I could, but I'm going with a misguided warrior, right? So the well, the lowliest um, trait that we can have there, and we need to train ourselves to get somewhere. But we know that we are going to be a warrior at some point. We're also going to be um, ambitious, which gives me basically a few points in addition to all my um, skill points. Um, and also we are having a higher stress gain than um, other characters, for example, which makes the game a bit more difficult towards the choices we have. Um, but other than that, it's really just ambitious. That's what we are. Um, and I think um, that's quite fitting for this. Um, I'm also going with some other traits, and this is the Aspiring Blade Master. Gives me once again a small boost to my health and my prowess skills, so the fighting in battle. Once again, this is something we can train and make us better than. It just shows us, you know, that we are a blade we want to be a real blade master at some point and that's basically it right we do have a lot of traits here we could also go with hail with another smaller health boost um the primary thing here is that we stay below 400 otherwise iron man mode would not be possible um and with throwing all of that together these are more or less the basic traits we can now finally start the game Alrighty, and this is how we're starting. So we are in this very small village there. We just stranded basically with our ship. Um, that's us with our little crew. We just created this village here now. We are about 300 people strong. That's about it. There we got our Bjorn of Hjatland of the dynasty of Skold. Now as we just created. Um, and yeah, this is basically it. He's 20 years old. He's an aspiring blade master. He is a misguided warrior. So that's giving him a few martial skills. And that's basically it. He's a nobody. And he actually has one goal and one goal only, and that is to become the Empire of Scandinavia or something like that. First things first though is that, well, in this little village of whatever we have down here in this little uh, isolated island is, we need to find us a wife, a beautiful one. So hopefully that we can make some babies and schooly poop around because that's basically the most important thing. We have two options here. We could either go now with Alliance Power as our first wife. So we got here this Sif. She's 10 years old and she's actually, it would be a good ally, right? Um, she's also just, so that's good for the stewardship bonuses that we would get out of it. And that's basically it, right? 
right. She's also not so bad looking. Um, she's just a bit too young there. Um, there is another one, so that would be an alliance here of 700 people. Christina, she's a bit older now. Um, she would also give me something. And the big bonus with her is she is lustful. And who doesn't like a lustful wife? 25% um, increased um, fertility rating is pretty cool, I think. Um, so this is that. Christina would be a very good thing. The other way we could go around is with the sum of all skills. So someone that is actually already a bit trained in something. So we would have someone that is on our side from the beginning. And then we would have Malmfrio here. She's gregarious. Uh, yeah, well, I guess that's pretty good. And cynical and humble. But no, actually, in this case, I'm going with, I'm going with the one that we just saw. Christina Everstotter Borg. Right, she's got a good alliance there, um, and she's lustful, and who doesn't like that? We need babies. Of this alliance here, we would also get some 200 prestige points out of it, which is just extremely important for us, since prestige is the only thing that's mattering at this point. So, let's send the proposal out there, and thus we have found us a nice, beautiful wife. Next up, well, since I said we are an aspiring blade master, we also go with the martial skill tree and the strategy focus, as this gives me the plus three martial skill that I want in the beginning, which is just amazing and very strong. Um, and we might also go then either with the Bellum Justum or with the Stalwart Leader. With this one here, we would be stronger at commanding armies. And with this one here, it would be cheaper for us to wage war. So let's go with this here one first um, before I'm going to wage war quite soon. Alrighty, nothing really has changed yet. Um, the game is not unpaused. Um, and another thing is, well, first of all, we have no air, obviously. So this is a bit bad for us. Let's get rid of all of that here. We have to look at our council as well. And uh, my council is rather bad here. Egil, he was probably one that, um, you know, drove the ship towards the ocean because that's exactly how bad he's looking to me right now and what I can see is that well we haven't really gotten the best marshals out there in my court so the people that are stranded with on this ship they're rather bad so what we could do about this one well we could go in our court and just have a look if we find some good women that are single like this gal here Björk and find us a good husband for her, right? So Gregor here, he has actually a martial skill of 17. Um, if we marry her to him, he will then join the court, right? With the matrilineal marriage as well. The children will also be of her house. He's quite old. Um, and let's send the proposal out. So he will then be coming to our court. This gal here also has no one yet. So we might also find her someone um, that might be useful in our court. So a good marshal is incoming. A good steward might be also something that we need. And we should also change the Godi that we have there. Um, there we have Bjarni. So he's, you know, quite okay. So in that case, we can swap him. He's actually 16 learning and he would endorse us right away. We could also further improve our relationship with him by just giving him the court physician title. So that's what he is for us our court physician and thus he loves us and thus will also endorse us right but for the steward i still need someone and that's why she comes into play let's find us a good steward there and this guy here in Yalt, he's of no dynasty yet he's pretty much alone um and he would also then join us and well he's a good steward anyway so let's just unpause the game from here um as we can see they're accepting the marriage of course there are nobodies you know so in that case they will just gladly join we also have now our first um wifey she's looking rather unhappy no idea how else i should say that She's not looking too happy about this, but we will make her happy. I promise you that. Now, let's just switch the marshal now. There is Gregor that we just invited to the court. He's the plus 17. Very good. And on the other hand, the steward that we got, Ingjald, our very good steward now. It's so important to have a good court and especially to have a good council. And yeah, those guys just look fabulous to me. Now, another thing, we have a bit of prestige now. And what we choose to do is we use that prestige since we are still a tribal in the tribal era, more or less. Um, we can also create our little army now with that little prestige that we have, right? And I just love the armored footmen. They're really strong. They cost me a lot, but they're just really strong. Also, the bowmen. Um, we still have prestige for one more. Um, and since we are in the north, it's quite hilly and mountainous all the time. And the pikemen are just perfect for that, right? They have mountain plus, they have the desert mountain, and they have the hills. So they're just really good for this territory overall. And thus, I have my three men at arms now ready as well. This is basically as far as I can go because um, I have a limit of three at the moment. This is then decided upon my fame level as well and upon my the, the size of my um, 
terrain but right now we're still only here so we're just training now the people basically that have stranded with us more or less that's basically it now that we have the council working as well, let's just check the army. As we can see, we have five champions um, available to us. So basically the first five champions are going with us. If we force them, we could force them then. And we have rather good champions at the moment. I don't need to invite any others. So my marshal is just going to organize the levies now. So this is increasing my levy size. Um, my steward, on the other hand, is increasing the development of my little island. So he's basically just going around and, you know, building stuff, um, administrating stuff. Um, and this might also lead to some happy events leading up then. My Chancellor, do we not have a better one? We don't have a better one. For the Chancellor, I would still, before we really unpause the game, check if we not have another single wifey or girl around here. This is a guy, right? Yes, he's a guy, so not that good. Um, fine, we're going with domestic affairs. Um, so he's just basically improving the relationships of my people. And it's unpausing season. Let's unpause the game. Let's let it unfold. So we have the marriage started already. Um, as we can see, we are actually losing a bit prestige at the moment. This is something we need to counter. We have our army here, which is actually of a high quality at the moment. Thanks to having some good um, captains and knights. And also having some good um, armored footmen, basically, because they're really strong. Um, and that's it. And now we just need to wait a bit and see how it grows, because we're training those people. And there we have it. So all of them have been trained. And as we can see also, um, thanks to a very good marshal, we also got the military presence that gives me 20% more garrison size um, in this county there in our small little island, whatever we are right here, somewhere quite isolated around us. Now we have an army of 700. Eh, that is not so much. Let's just have a look around. This guy here is really weak. He's still allied with this guy here, right? So he has got a very strong alliance there. So he's untouchable for us at the moment. We might see um, through the marriage between the two of them. No, Barrett and Sif. I mean, that is probably then down here, this one, this gal here, right? Through the marriage of one of his children, um, he has this alliance there. So if we get rid of her, the alliance, we could break it. Um, though murder schemes are not very successful too early on. So this is rather difficult at the moment. Let's just have a look around. Oh, Taurus Haven, the surrounding next island there, is actually pretty weak. And no alliance has been formed yet because basically this guy here, Ingolfer, he hasn't found a, a, a child yet, a son yet somewhere. So we might just declare a war, conquer the county, far inferior, and we declare the war thus. Now this is pretty exciting. Let's raise my army. For the army, since we are pretty strong at fighting, I'm going to be the commander of this army. This is risky, you know, so in that case we could die in a battle of course, but on the other hand it gives me a nice morale boost, it gives me experience points and I'm a pretty good commander right now, so I just will have the battle myself. My army has been gathered, my few 700 people, and we might just try to sail over there now and conquer this island there, right? Now we've just landed here, as we can see, landing on the battlefield and we are leading the fray and as we can see we're actually winning this one by quite a huge margin. We have just the better soldiers overall, so the um, value is with us. Uh, and just on the head he's kicking him and we've also taken him prisoner or at least one of oh yeah we have taken the chieftain as prisoner and this basically leads to a 100% war score right away um, we have now won this island here we can take the hostages we gain 75 fame because right now we're a nobody right nobody knows us nobody knows anything about us and with every single point of fame well we then just get more famous and can allow ourselves a few more things and people will also come to us then and we also share 75 um, prestige based on their contributions let's enforce the demands and thus we have the victory, and thus we have Tors Haven. Now I'm going to disband my army real quick here. I do have an interesting thing now going on here. Since I have Tors Haven, we have now the most part of the Northern Isles, right? So we are landed here in the Northern Isles. So it's basically these three piles of land just here in the Arctic Ocean somewhere. And we could create a title now since we have two de jure counties here. For 125 coin, we would be actually a Dutch or a Duke. We could actually get this duchy. We are not even a duke yet, you know. We are just a chieftain. Um, we are still that low on the list. But in that case, it's still fine. Um, and how Skald does has got in his first um, level of fame, right? Our next level to insignificance then. Now, this is still a bit far away. But for now, it's fine. 
we gotten the next territory. This one here though is, yeah, first of all, another smaller shitty village that we just have here now um, and a very low control rating. So since I do have a pretty good marshal, I might just go there and increase the control of this one here. It takes him seven years. It's usually much faster than this and um, we can then have full control of it. The higher the control, the more taxes we're getting paid for um, and also the bigger the levy size is. Speaking of the levies, with this little island that we just conquered there now, we have increased our, our soldier size there by 100. So at least that's a good thing, right? We got him a bit more powerful in this regard. So Bjorn is pretty happy with himself at the moment, as we can see. Um, he's still only betrothed, so he doesn't even have the wife yet. She's 13, with 16 we can marry her. It's still a bit time, uh, a bit a bit far away there, but it's going to be worth it if we've survived that long. We've also increased our martial skill points with that, so this is another very important step. Let's just track our council there again real quick. I think everything is looking rather fine. We have now basically two routes to go for. Since we don't have a wife yet, we don't have children that we can, you know, use in some way. We have two options. First of all, um, my alliance still stands, right? Yes, my alliance with this guy down here still stands. So we could still call upon him uh, for those 700 soldiers if we need help. Um, let's just have a look around. So we do have Iceland up here, which is pretty interesting because it's so isolated. Um, we also have Norway. And keep in mind that Iceland, the um, Isle or the Northern Isles here, these and Scandinavia are all part of the Scandinavian Empire, right? So we still have that option um, to conquer these things then with the Empire of Scandinavia. So this is why we want to stay on these islands as well and actually expand to Iceland. Now for Iceland, we could conquer it right away um, or we could raid it if we want to, right? With raiding, we would get actually a bit of money out of it, of these um, domains here, um, or we just, yeah, conquer it. Let's just have a look around. What do we have here? We have Chiefs our sitting here on this little island there um, with 500 soldiers. She, she's got no alliances, but she's got sons already that are unmarried. So in this regard, it is only a matter of time before she has um, some alliances here. The other guy has one child that is unmarried, um, also no alliances yet. So we should be quick about this, otherwise they might be much stronger than now. Plus, I've been to Reykjavik once or twice and it's just a beautiful town, so I might just get it for myself now, right? Here in Iceland, there we have it. And let's just go to her, smile into her face and tell her, well, we want your land. Um, and as we can see, she's in fury, but she's got 500 soldiers, so that's not so weak. Um, let's just check the other one real quick as well, how strong he would be in battle. He's a bit weaker overall, but I'm still very confident that we can win this one. Bear in mind though, we are playing with no saving here, so um, if I make the mistake and I lose, well then I lose. And in that case, we just have to live with these consequences then as well. I think I might be a bit risky on this part here. We have the upper hand, let's declare the war. Right, first thing I want to do is I'm going to move my rally point to the uh, to this one, to this island here. I don't even know the name of my island. Um, Therea, it is called, right? This island there. And then we're going to raise our army. Our superior quality army. Let's just check, we are not the commander, so we're going to be the commander once again ourselves. We just collect the soldiers now, and then basically we march on Reykjavik. We can see that she already raised her army, there are 500 soldiers, let's just have a look at the battle here of Reykjavik and as we can see she's also got a superior quality army, she's actually got a better quality than us. But still we gained the numbers and we are um, attacking ourselves with a bigger prowess um, skill, so we can win this one for good. There we've won, um, we still have 663 soldiers and all we need to do now really is conquer um, this little tribal village there of Reykjavik at the moment, and she's attacking again. She's trying it once again. Alright, she lost once again. Perhaps <laughs> she's trying it a third time. Um, we should be careful though. Yeah, she's going in again. I don't believe that. We should be careful though because um, we are leading the battles every time. Right? And there we have it. We are wounded. And that's probably something that she actually managed to achieve there. Um, we are now one-legged. This means that we are not that strong anymore and the learning has increased though. She is attacking again. We are already at 100% because we, we took her prisoner. And let's just make this one quick before I actually die in battle. Now, I should not be a commander anymore in battles, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, oh! 
we have been treated because we have a good cool physician we are no longer um ill right and this one here is a bit um reduced now we're still one legged as far as i can see but it's better than nothing right i mean we got a hooked leg now now, on the march, at the end of the field exercise, it had seemed a brilliant idea to practice regrouping an army in this array. I split my troops and ordered every officer. So this is basically one of these um, martial challenges that you have. Um, and you can choose what you want. And I might gain a martial skill point is much more important to me. We are just going to say goodbye to all these victory messages. Reykjavik has a pretty low control rating. Um, so has this little island here as well. So we might just not to do anything there for now. Reykjavik, well, we have to live with this. Um, now, speaking of development of the tribal villages, as we can see, for example, on this island, we can only have one village, right? And this village has basically nothing on board at the moment. So we should also be looking out to construct something here, like some palisades or a gathering hall, at least, to make it a bit more comfortable for us, because right now we're still only having a little tribal hold. Okay, there's basically a rabble now in one of the inns that we visited and we have now different choices here. So I've got enough coin to pay for the damages that my people caused. We would lose a bit of money there. Um, we could also have, we could also say that my men have the right to do this rabble there, to destroy something. We would lose some prestige out of this or we just stop with this and also lose some stress. Um, we don't have any stress, so I don't need to do this. Let's pay a bit of coin and continue with the search. And we can still create the title. What I still also want to do is I want to get my next territory. So basically we want to unite Iceland there as well. Um, there we have once again the On The March. And it also seems that Gregor, our marshal, is a bit overzealous and he's trying to train the troops without my command. And those were not the orders I gave. Um, let's do this. He should um, really listen to us. He, we also lose a bit of reputation there with him, but we got a pretty high reputation there anyway. Minus 27 is perfectly fine for one of our lower people, so that is that. Now, my troops are still replenishing, and we still have the On The March. So as I'm passing through a small village, I notice that though clad in simple cloth, the town's guard are all carrying weapons with my mark on them. Welcoming me in the muddy street was Tollier, the self-proclaimed divine guardian of the town. My soldiers laid down their armor to help this preachers serve Odin. So we could say now um, we already ruled by a divine right. We would actually get 150 prestige, but my vassals will not like that that are religious. Um, this is actually a pretty cool thing and I'm going with that because prestige is the most important thing right now. And on the march, I mean... Quite the irony that with one leg we are on the march, but still we are continuing the march, the search. And my lord, our water stores leaked while on the move and our pack animals cannot make the march home without more water than we currently have. The soldier looks at me nervously. If the lord and his champions helped carry water skins, however, um, then we would lose the prestige again that we just gained. Um, we would also gain desertion or we just get home and abandon the search. Chieftain of Hjatlerland gets minus 10% levy size. We can live with that. I want to see what's at the end of our search there. So we're going with that. I definitely don't want to lose the prestige though. And speaking of prestige, we might also just now increase the size of one of our armies here. And the bowmen are the cheapest ones. So I'm going to improve the size of them with the bit of prestige that I have. Um, and the last of my troops have made it back and order has been restored. And thus it was a successful um, expedition that we got there and we also get a martial skill point. Now let's just have a look around that real quick because there's some interesting things. Now I'm not going into the gallantry anymore there even though the knight effectiveness is pretty good but we are not a leader anymore on the battlefield, right? Um, we have only one leg. I might also go with some things here. Um, and another very cool thing is the naval speed bonus this one here because we are on an island and well getting naval speed is pretty good for us so let's just do this one and a little bit later my army has gathered again so we have now 1000 soldiers we also gained another skill point just right now and since raiding is going to be um, one of the more important things in the future i'm also going with say raid speed 25 percent and supply capacities plus 200% which is just really important to keep all of that intact. Now up here we have now um, Chieftain Gardor or Gardor of Ostraland and he's pretty weak right so we might actually just conquer him um, and well get rid of his misery there because he's so alone out there. Let's just raise my army right here raise them all 
I'm not going to be the commander of this one anymore. We have one legged. Even though, wait a second, we could still be the commander at the back of the battlefield. Right? We have a few bonuses here. And that is the advantage in hills and mountains. Right? So actually, let's us be the commander there once again. But there we got the 1000 soldiers. He is actually right now going for my islands. We are going to ignore that for now. Oh, he's already down here with 400 soldiers. Let's just catch him there. On the ship, we are now really fast, thanks to a perk, so we can be there on time. We also got another thing, so far from home, a stranger is brought before me. She has been waiting outside the castle gate for a week, my leech, my guard informs me. The woman bows deeply, my name is Brethok. And your highness, I've traveled far and wide and seen many things, but I'm wary of the road. We could put her here. She's Catholic. Um, she's good at diplomacy, though. But in that case, she's not really good. I mean, with her, we could get someone in that is good at something, right? So in that case, yeah, let's say the modern area. We also get a strong hook on her, so she would help us with murder schemes. Um, and she becomes my courtier. I'm doing that. And now we are getting in there. We are getting a, light, uh, a slight penalty there for embarking from the ocean. But other than that, we should be totally fine here in this battle there. And as we can see, we can win this one. We have a slight chance of actually capturing him. Oh, and yes, we actually captured his son. So this gives me up to 73% on the war score right away. So that is rather successful. Now we just need to get here and conquer the Australand, as it's called. Um, we could also then ransom him. So for 50 coin. But we're doing that once the war is over. So I'm not going to do this right away. And thus we sail together back home. <laughs> so the enemy army and myself, we are both going into that one here now where we just capture them again as it seems and also lay the battle on them and thus defeating them once more we're going now to 95 war score and we're also now married very good the marriage is finally here that gives me another 200 prestige points thanks to the marriage um we are now married so we are fertile as well here she's also lustful um that should give us some nice little children soon with all this goodly pooping and let's just conquer Iceland here now too. And look at that. Just two months after the, the, the wedding, we are already pregnant there. So in that case, we are waiting a child. We have gathered that or captured that. And now, finally, after all this time, Iceland belongs to us. And we have thus, at least for now, united the Northern Isles up here. So Iceland and those two smaller ones here. And this guy here, he still has this very, very strong alliance. Actually... He doesn't. The alliance is over. So we might just do this one too. And it actually would be no problem to get the Orkney Islands. So well, you know what. Well, we're capturing it. We also got our first heir. So there it is. Um, your newborn son is born. And actually we can give him two names there. So the family name. We're going to name him after the family name. After myself, Bjorn. And... Um, now I see that. That's the first time it happens. We actually got two children out of this pregnancy here now. So we got two of them. One daughter and one son at the same time. Are they by any chance? Yeah, they're twins. So they also have an opinion bonus of each other there. So isn't that nice? We actually got two of them. Um, we could now choose. That's why there are two names. I was a bit confused there now. So we got Gunhildrir and we also got then, for example, Good Norse Man. Um, Gorm doesn't really sound good, but Einar sounds pretty good. May you grow strong and wise. I say that and my gift to those two children is then right away the Orkney Islands that we capture right now. And thus, I think we are off to a pretty good start um, here with our dynasty as we now rule Skald. 